I love caffeine. You know, as I mentioned, I was never really into drinking. I'm not a marijuana smoker. I just, I never liked it. It just wasn't for me. No judgment. It's just, it's just not my thing. I like being um, focused and alert and energetic. Maybe I suppose I have a little bit more of adrenaline thing than a sedative thing. So caffeine, as I mentioned, is, works as actually a competitive agonist of adenosine. So how does it work? Caffeine parks in the adenosine receptor. Remember, adenosine is this molecule that builds up the longer we've been awake. So it parks in that receptor. So it's an agonist meaning it can park there, but it outcompetes the adenosine. So it creates an artificial state of alertness that way, but it also triggers the release of, of adrenaline, also called epinephrine. Epinephrine and adrenaline are the same thing from the brain and body, two sources. There's a, you have your adrenal glands above your kidneys. That's one source. And then you have a collection of little neurons in your brainstem called the locus ceruleus. Locus ceruleus is an amazing structure. It sends those little wires we call axons off into different areas of the brain, acts like kind of a sprinkler sprinkler system, releasing epinephrine and creating states of alertness in the brain. And caffeine stimulates those neurons to release adrenaline. So it literally creates wakefulness in the brain and wakefulness in the body through locus ceruleus in the brain and the adrenals in the body. In addition, it does something really cool, which is that it increases the sensitivity of the dopamine receptors. Now we haven't talked too much about dopamine, but dopamine is perhaps the most powerful neuromodulator. It's involved in movement. That's why people who have Parkinson's are deficient in dopamine neurons and they have trouble generating um, smooth movements. So they shake, they have trouble in severe cases, they can't speak, they, they feel depressed because dopamine is not, we hear about dopamine hits. It's in, in other areas of the brain and body such that it controls motivation, creation, craving and drive. And dopamine makes us feel good, but it really makes us feel motivated. There's a classic experiment to demonstrate this, and then I'll get back to how caffeine influences this. They've done this with rats and with humans, natural condition with humans, but you take two rats and you give them a lever, they can press that lever and they can get a reward. The reward for a rat is really tasty food, or you can water deprive the rat, somewhat cruel experiment, and then they can get water. You can food deprive them and they can press the lever, they get food. You can give them access to an opposite sex rat and rats like sex, and so they, they'll get to mate, but they press the lever. And both rats will press the lever as they're rational in some sense. If one rat is dopamine depleted, meaning all the neurons that create dopamine are eliminated from the brain, it will still work for pleasure and it gets pleasure. However, it, it'll only work by hitting that lever. If you move those rats one rat length away from the lever, what you find is the one with dopamine will work. It will get up and walk across the cage and hit the lever. The one with no dopamine won't even move one body length in order to achieve pleasure. It has no motivation. So dopamine, and this is true in humans, there are naturalistic conditions that sadly, there's some recreational drug users out there that got bad batches of certain drugs that killed all their dopamine neurons. You see a similar effect. They can still have pleasure, but they can't motivate. People who are deficient in dopamine have trouble with focus. They have trouble with motivation and they are the, no disrespect, but they are the people that can sit around thinking about the things they need to do forever. They are chronic procrastinators and they have very, very high, what we call activation energy. And they're just not very motivated. Dopamine can be enhanced by taking various things and doing certain things we could talk about, but caffeine increases the sensitivity of dopamine receptors, increasing not just the tendency to move by release of adrenaline, but makes us more motivated to go out and pursue goals. In fact, the major effect of dopamine is to place us into a mode of what we call exteroception, of focusing on things that are outside our immediate experience or the confines of our skin. Create the company, get the grades, find the mate, uh, forage for food. This is an ancient generic mechanism that was designed to carry over to most every pursuit activity of any kind. So caffeine increases dopamine function by increasing dopamine receptors. I am a fan of taking caffeine or drinking caffeine early in the day. I, as I mentioned, I think yerba mate is one source that's great. Some people like coffee, some people like espresso. Just make sure you hydrate and make sure you're getting enough salt as you hydrate. Uh, you don't need to buy any fancy electrolyte solution. You can just take a little pinch of salt and put it in water um, for every coffee that you drink or espresso that you drink, you'll find you feel much better. In fact, in some South American countries and in Europe, they'll give you some water with your coffee. They sort of understand this relationship of the dehydration and caffeine causes the excretion of sodium by way of the kidney. So I would stop drinking caffeine around two or three in the afternoon. Many people find that they can drink caffeine until eight or 9 PM and then still fall asleep, but the quality of your sleep will be greatly disrupted. So try and taper that off uh, toward the afternoon. The other thing that you can do is that if you use caffeine regularly, I recommend avoiding caffeine for in the first 90 to 120 minutes after waking. But there's a, some other fun things that you can do with caffeine. One of the things is to become a bit of an intermittent caffeine user. It's a little hard to do, but if you're somebody who really relies on caffeine, 
You can try deleting caffeine for a morning and then doing it the next day. You'll immediately feel the rewarding properties of it, of like how great it tastes and how charged you get. So if you get to the point where you're drinking more and more caffeine and you're not getting the great sensations and motivation from it, you're probably too caffeine adapted. I make it a point to not take too many stimulants of any kind before training every third or fourth training session. I'll just, I realize it might not be the best training session, but I try not to rely on stimulants too much because I want my natural systems to work. We've heard of adrenal burnout. No such thing. Your adrenals could take you through 200 years of activity. There is something called adrenal insufficiency syndrome, but adrenal burnout is, a, is the creation of online marketing. It's not a, it's not a medical term. It doesn't exist. Your adrenals are remarkable. Adrenal insufficiency syndrome are pe people that don't make enough adrenaline. And that actually is a serious clinical condition, but you're not going to feel burnt out from drinking too much caffeine. What, what's happening is the caffeine isn't working anymore because you've saturated all your receptors. So avoid overuse, stagger the use you know i actually think it's a good resilience exercise every once in a while to just skip caffeine for a day some people get headaches and that's because caffeine affects blood flow this is kind of interesting if you have a headache Sometimes a little bit of coffee can help that headache. Depends if you're caffeine adapted or not. For people that are caffeine adapted, the way that caffeine works is going to be, it's actually gonna help dilate the blood vessels of the brain and body. So it's gonna actually allow more blood flow. If you're not caffeine adapted and you don't drink caffeine very often, it's going to constrict those blood vessels. They essentially make it harder to relax. So, you know, this gets a little technical, but there's some fun things you can do with caffeine, like mix it with theanine. If you feel like you're overstimulated, you could take 100 milligrams of theanine and you could adjust down your level of jitter jitteriness. Some people really like that caffeine plus theanine combination because it's that alert but calm. Whereas when they just drink caffeine, they're just too buzzed and they can't focus.